Hello everyone, this is a other repair video of a ECM module that is for a Honda car. You can see the part number there and it has some issues with the power MOSFETs inside. I was also given a diagram of the potential issues here. On the right hand side you can see there are four MOSFETs so we'll be having a look to see which of those MOSFETs are damaged. So I'm just using my multimeter in continuity mode just to make sure that there's no shorts. I went through everything there and uh, there was no short at all. So this is just more or less a damaged component. You may not be reading a short, but you can read a certain values to know if they're bad. So here's a brand new chip. It's a SSD 103 and the left pin or pin one is the gate. The other three pins are the drain and this, the top four pins are the drain and so basically inside this this chip is a MOSFET a power MOSFET end channel and uh, it also has a reverse flywheel diode as well so here for reference the bottom left pin is uh, the gate and then the top are all soldered together as well so uh, if you just googled um, SSD 103 data sheet you can actually see the specs on this so I opened it up and I had a look so that I know uh, I know how to test it so you can see um, it also gives you a diagram um, we'll just zoom in a, a bit here you can see that the pin out the pins are there it's a, I believe it's a SOP package 8 pin and you can pin one is connected to the gate has reverse flywheel diode two three and four are the drain and the sources are um, eight seven six and five so if you measure from the gate to the um, the source there I was reading these values okay this is a good chip right here and uh, so it if the pauses at the source and the bottom the negative is at the drain it should be open circuit and then you'll if you put the negative on the top and pause it on the bottom you should read about 700 on the continuity mode so that's how you can verify if your chip is is a uh, faulty or not here's an example so right here I just put the negative to the top and pause it on the bottom and this goes through them all you should be reading about um, 700 there and here's an example uh, if you don't if you read it open then that's bad so those two first ones were bad and you can also measure from the gate to the drain as well I was reading them were all the same but when I went to the third MOSFET here you can see it's reading a different uh, value so they're all the same chip so just read the same position and if there's any reading that's not the same you can kind of verify that that's the faulty chip so what I'm going to be doing is I will be removing all four of these chips just because over time they do wear out and I was given the replacements part so I'll be taking all these chips off and putting on the new chips so what I'm doing is I put some flux and then I'm putting some low melting solder on each of the pins then when I use my, this is a quick chip for removal. And then I'm using my heat gun right here that uh, heating them all up and so that I can remove each individual uh, chip there. So I, I've heated them up about uh, 350 degrees. It doesn't, shouldn't take too long for them to come off. Uh, and then with them off, I can now replace the, uh, the new chips on that the same location I'm just cleaning up the pads there are a total of eight pads per chip so just remember that the the pin one is the first one to the left at the bottom and I'm just tacking it in and then I'll tack the other ones as well and you can remember that the top four pins are all connected and the rightmost three pins are connected so you can actually connect those pins as well together because they're all connected internally inside that package and just verify that the gate is isolated by itself that you don't want to short that uh, the pin number one so that's the most important pin to watch out for 
the key with soldering is using lots of flux so I'm putting some flux there and then I'm just tacking on each of the the pins and, and then going through it and putting back on these MOSFETs now I'm not a hundred percent sure what these MOSFETs are doing I, I believe it's more or less acting like a electrical relay and uh, turning on and off so it probably has some modulation so here's under the scope you can see that I've soldered the top all together and the pins and then the last step would be to clean up the board I'm just using isopropyl alcohol which is uh, good because it can get rid of all the flux that you use when you're soldering so that's how to replace the and repair your uh, ECM I hope this is helpful and that your vehicle is back in operating condition if you enjoy repair videos you can consider subscribing